two guests, Andy Mekora from Istanbul Koch University, Department of Cardiology. As a council member of the FS2024 and a member of the Digital Health Group, it's my great pleasure to introduce Mr. Ushal Eskan from Turkcell Company, Turkey. Turkcell is a leading mobile phone operator in Turkey and in recent years focused on healthcare by establishing hospital information management systems and conducting projects on personalized medicine on chronic diseases. Ms. Eskan is a prominent engineer in Turkcell Company. Since 2017, she has coordinated several internationally and nationally funded projects in healthcare and I had the pleasure to work with her in two of them. Dear Ishan, could you please tell us more about yourself? Hello, this is Ishan Özkan. I'm working as an R&D program manager in Turkcell, which is a digital telco company in Turkey, as you have mentioned. I'm responsible for coordinating international funded projects in smart verticals, mostly in smart health domain. Today, it's my pleasure to talk to you, Professor, about our collaboration in the Smart Health project called eWatch. So we are going to open a window into variable uh, for improvement of cardiovascular health together with you. In the uh, application of digital health technologies in cardiovascular diseases is our way of life dramatically and reshape our approach to patient care. Medical sensors and apps enabled us to monitor and even manage our patients at home. Today, every house can be transferred to a humble clinic. Initially, devices for digital health could only monitor the blood pressure or track daily activities. But today, their capabilities expanded from prevention to management, including targeted interventions on diet, smoking cessation, and cardiac rehabilitation. The Potential of smart wearables is immense. We can detect heart rhythm abnormalities, decrease in oxygen content of the blood of our patients, measure temperature, blood pressure, glucose, and so on, monitor sleep quality, and even performance of the heart. These properties make them great tools to improve the healthcare of our patients. The underlying technology looks simple at first sight, but there are several technical challenges and details to take care of. Therefore, I'd like to interview Isha for her journey and her experiences in wearable technology projects. Uh, Isha, what was the scope, the main goal of your project? In the eWatch Extensive Health Monitoring Platform project, we aim to create an end-to-end -end solution, a platform to monitor and follow up patients remotely using variable devices, especially patients who had cardiac diseases. We have created a story in the beginning of the project, and then we have built up the platform realizing our storyline. Let me tell about it. We have a persona, 78 years of Susan, living alone in an apartment in the Netherlands. She has had a cardiac surgery very recently. She stayed at the hospital for about a week. After the surgery, she has worn a variable for the remote cardiac monitoring inside the hospital. The variable signals were analyzed with machine learning algorithms to give a warning about the presence of arterial fibrillation, which professor, uh, which is a very important cardiac problem, as you know. Yes, atrial fibrillation is the most frequent chronic arrhythmia among the elderly population and its detection and monitoring plays a vital role in prevention of unwanted outcomes like stroke and heart failure. Absolutely. So when we come back to our storyline, uh, Susan had no heart rhythm disorder during her stay in the hospital. Recovery process was good. So she has been discharged and she has gone to her home. At home, she has continued to wear the variable. Her results were investigated by the cardiologist regularly. Her results were fair and she decided to enjoy a holiday. While she was informing her doctor about her plans, the cardiologist suggested her to go to a healthcare and wellness center which supplies health services. Accordingly, she has made a booking in a healthcare and wellness hotel in Turkey. When she arrived to the hotel, she has been equipped with the e-watch variable. During her stay, the hotel doctor tracked her vital metrics and atrial fib fibrillation measurement results via a dashboard. Her cardiologist in the Netherlands has also monitored the data generated in Turkey via the same dashboard. 
Susan trusted the system equipped by high standard security and privacy. She felt secure and confident through her stay. Well, so we can say that she had a nice holiday in Turkey. Yes, exactly. Uh, there are lots of uh, technical details, especially from the telco point of view. Can you briefly tell us about the wearable technology you're working with? Yes, of course. So we have started to our project in 2017 and completed in 2020. We aim to offer a solution in which patients, clinicians and caregivers could benefit from a holistic approach. The solution starts with vital sign tracking devices like variables and sensors. The metrics collected from the patients by these different devices are sent to the cloud. And in the cloud, the data is processed using artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms. After the processing is completed, the health results and the trends for the patients are shown in a dashboard. The dashboard can be used by clinicians in their diagnosis, treatments and follow-up, and as well as by patients and caregivers too. In the project, Professor, we have closely worked with you and your team. You and your team supported us in many ways to collect clinical needs, to collect patient requirements, to set up real-life user scenarios and use cases. For the ethical approval process and your engagement was very precious to take care of sensitive data of the patients. After the first prototypes were ready, you have helped us to test and validate this with your team first of all and then after that with the volunteer patients. During EPIS, as discussed in the session of harnessing the power of data in healthcare, we also needed a large amount of data from patients to create artificial intelligence algorithms and models. You helped us to collect these data, label, and evaluate the results after our machine learning processes were executed. Thanks for you, your team, and for the volunteer patient groups for their dedication and patience since we had to repeat the same process with lots of iterations to reach out to a successful result. We have to thank you for sharing the project with us. It was a pleasure to work with you. Uh, but we had to face some challenges too. Uh, what learnings um, did you gain along the way and how did those learnings serve for the development of the project? In our three-year-long project, we experienced some difficulties and we had to overcome these problems. But at the end, we had a good set of uh, lessons learned that helped us to better design our new follow-up projects. The first difficulty was faced in the starting phase, which was understanding, absorbing, and extracting the needs and requirements of the clinical side. Our team working in the project were consisted uh, of engineers who didn't have any experience in health projects before. In order to overcome these difficulties, we included experienced academicians who worked as a bridge between the clinical side and our engineers. Mm -hmm. Another challenge has been encountered during the reliability test of the variable prototype. You have to compare your results with already approved devices results that are in the market uh, for clinical domain. We attempted to gather vital parameters of patients as raw, bulk, anonymized data with hospital-type devices. However, uh, due to commercial reasons, this data was not available to extract. So we had to compare the data with more manual methods. The third challenge is reaching to a huge number of data in order to produce more accurate results with artif artificial intelligence and your team made their best to engage more volunteer patients to enlarge the data set. It's so important to work and cooperate with good partners. Synergy is the key among project partners. And last but not the least, technology projects should be iterative, covering analysis, implementation, tests, and piloting phases repetitively. And agile methodologies ease this process in order to be more productive. Undoubtedly. Uh, dear Rachel, wearable technology is a great opportunity for patients who are incapable to visit their physicians, like elderly individuals or those who are handicapped. But the devices should also be simple, user-friendly and affordable. 
how did you leverage patient insights? What is the importance of patient insights in such projects? No matter how big the investment is in a project, if the usability and the user experience concepts are not handled correctly, the projects will not success the projects will not have successful results. For this reason, we try to figure out the information regarding these concepts by engaging your team and the patients themselves. Another important insight is the sustainability concept. Here we talk about the continuity of the health services of the patients independent from time and location. Simplicity and ergonomics are another topics which we have paid attention. For example, the variables mustn't cause skin irritation in long-term use. The weight of the variable, the battery period and the charging period, they are all considered. Another insight is about the compatibility and capability of the variables. They are in connection with gateways or other mobile phones. The variables should be working with different brands of mobile phones, for example. Additionally, the data storage or data retrieval capacity must be sufficient to work the system efficiently. Another point is security and privacy. It should be guaranteed with standards like FHIR or HL7, since the health data is very sensitive. And the proposed solution should be GDPR compatible. The variable and the whole system connect to this variable should be easily maintained. The first setup is important. It should be very easy after purchase. Any technical problem should be solved in a short period of time for the convenience of the continuity of health monitoring. And lastly, the product and the health services should be affordable, as you also mentioned, in order to widen the usage to a larger community. So these are the insights that we have gathered through our patients. Very important details. Lastly, can you share your final words and experiences for patient engagement in smart health projects? Yes, of course. Uh, with patient engagements, we could understand patients' requirements, needs, and uh, their experiences, facilitating communication with the patients motivates them to monitor their healthcare more actively. Patient engagement groups are very important to represent the patients and raising awareness. They are the voice of all the patients, strengthening all the collaboration with the healthcare providers, researchers, policymakers, and other stakeholders, professors. Exactly, that really is indisputable. Uh, dear guests, today we have tried to discuss how harnessing wearable device data can improve quality of life and well-being of our patients with heart diseases. Thank you for listening to us. And dear Rachel, thank you for giving us such valuable information. Thank you, Professor, for this valuable talk. It was great speaking to you. Uh, before moving to the next session with Sue, who is a journalist from the top Korean news agency, she will share a case study on empowering patient advocacy through strategic media trend partnerships. I'd like to leave the last words to a great caregiver who uses digital health technology very actively and going to share her experiences with her beloved ones. Thank you for watching us. Hi, I'm taking care of my mother at 83 years old and two aunts who are 78 and 72 years old. Uh, my mother has atrial fibrillation, aortic stenosis and hyperlipidemia. One of my aunt also has uh, atrial fibrillation and ischemic heart disease. My other aunt has other sclerosis and hyperlipidemia. Uh, with old age, we had to change our approach in dealing with health issues. Uh, we are now focusing more on prevention uh, rather than dealing with them as they appear. That's why we have to track their health very closely. And we know that living as active as we can will help a lot to maintain a good health, especially for heart conditions. Uh, we are walking regularly because it's the most basic and easy form of exercise. First, we use uh, fitness watches for our walks. 
we have been setting goals for each walk and tracking our steps and heart rate patterns. The watches have informed us whether the heart rate gets too high while exercising or the heart rates slow down during resting. Uh, the variables also inform us about the average heart rate during the day. Each individual is unique, so is their health condition and heart rate pattern. Uh, knowing the heart rate pattern of my mom and my aunts help us be proactive in keeping them healthy. Also, it's important to share all these data with our medical doctors. Uh, the variables have a warning system when there's a prolonged inactivity and it helps my mom and my aunts to be more active. They also check their heart rates more often if they feel any irregularity. In addition to tracking exercise and heart rate patterns, we also track sleeping patterns. Being informed about our bodily patterns is a great advantage of the variables and I believe it helps us not only for keeping track of our health but also raise our awareness about the importance of exercise and sleep patterns. On top of all, the satisfaction they feel after completing the, their goals has increased their mood, which we know to be important for both physical and mental health. Thank you.